Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to the system of Ross128. This is a star that's relatively close to us and very recently we've actually discovered something very unusual. Specifically a new exoplanet that makes this the second closest to our own Earth. Anyway, let's talk about this a little bit more and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now, this is ROS128 in Space Engine, and as you can see, there's actually quite a lot of planets orbiting around it. And I've uh, done a video about this particular star, and the, it's unusual signals that we received um, a few months ago. And you can check out this video on the channel to learn more about this star, because we're not really talking about anything else except for the newly discovered planet. Interestingly though, in Space Engine, because it does things statistically and basically tries to predict the amount of planets based on a type of a star, it actually does have a planet that looks remarkably like the one we found. It's actually right here, although it is a little bit farther away, or not farther away, sorry, a little bit closer um, to the one we discovered. I'm going to be talking about the discovery in a few seconds, but first I really wanted to show you what this looks like. We're going to go here and look at that. It is a remarkably Earth-like looking object. As a matter of fact, if you were to land here, it would look almost exactly the same as Earth does, um, in Space Engine at least. And you'll notice there's actually quite a lot of ice here, and that's because this object actually orbits on the outskirts of the habitable zone. And of course, because it probably just doesn't have enough uh, greenhouse effect. As a matter of fact, I think it says only one degree greenhouse effect. But we think that these types of planets are probably um, a lot hotter than, than they appear here. We're going to land on this object and then come back to it at the end of the video. But before this, let's do a little bit of science and let's find out what is it that we've discovered around Ross 128. Now first, let's start by actually looking at where exactly the star is located in relation to other stars and our own Sun. So there is Ross 128 in Universe Sandbox. And if I zoom out of here and move at a distance of um, just over 10.8 light years in the direction of left, I guess, in this case, there is our sun. So Ross 128 is actually one of the closest star to us, uh, and it's just about over twice as far away as the closest star, which is Proxima Centauri. Ross 128 is also not very bright. As a matter of fact, it's very, very dim. It is a red dwarf star, and it would be practically impossible to see it with a telescope unless you have a, a very specialized infrared telescope. And so there it is, kind of. It's very difficult to see. And so here's Ross 128, and here's our sun in comparison. It's a lot smaller than our sun. It's a lot less massive. Its mass is about only 16% of uh, our own sun. And um, it is a red dwarf, but interestingly, this actually is not a very active red dwarf. It's about 5 billion years old, but it's already um, a lot less active than other stars, like for example, Proxima Centauri or Trappist-1. As a matter of fact, because this star spins about 4 times slower than our sun, um, it doesn't generate enough magnetic fields to create these flares. The, these uh, flares that you see right now are very, very rare. And that actually creates a possibility for any planet around the system to uh, be habitable. And it just so happens that after about 10 years of observation, um, something like 160 attempts to look at this star, we finally discovered a world around it. Now this world is currently simply known as Ross 128b. B, of course, represents the idea that this is the first planet that we discovered. We're going to transform it a little bit to make it uh, look a little bit more like the planet you saw in the beginning of the, of the video. But we also are going to basically just talk about what we know so far. So first of all, we know that this world is about 1.3, or specifically 1.38 masses of our own Earth. So it is a little bit more massive. We don't really know its density, so we can't really tell if the gravity here is higher, because if this world is much larger in size, the gravity on the surface might actually even be lower. But for this simulation, we're going to assume that its gravity is very similar to that on Earth, 
and that it's a terrestrial world. Although we're once again are not sure if this is a terrestrial world at all. We haven't really seen it pass in front of the star. In other words, we haven't really seen a transit. This would be a transit right now, where you see it pass in front of the star. But what we did see is the wobbles in the orbit of Ross 128. In other words, if you look at the speed right here, you'll see that its speed increases and decreases occasionally. It goes up and goes down, it goes up, it goes down. And uh, these wobbles are generated by the planet orbiting around it. And this is what we call um, Doppler shift. This is the Doppler shift that we observed after about 10 years. We realized that this was probably caused by a planet about 1.38 masses of our own Earth. And so this is how we discovered Ross 128. We don't really know much else about it, um, except for, of course for the fact we know where it's located. And if I enable the habitable zones here, you'll see that it's sort of on the um, habitable zone border. As a matter of fact, it's sort of where Venus is. Um, in our own solar system, that is. Of course, the orbit here is a lot quicker, so it only takes about 10 days to orbit um, once around its uh, star, its parent star. But depending on what it has for atmosphere and depending on its albedo and, of course, depending on its size as well, it might be either hotter than Earth or kind of comfortable Earth-like. It's very unlikely to be colder, though, unless it has, like, zero atmosphere. Now, to find this object, the scientists used uh, what's known as HARPS, or High Accuracy Radial Velocity Planner Searcher. It's basically a technique that's extremely accurate at finding objects like this. So we are like 99.9% .9 certain that this exists and this is how it is. In other words, we're certain that there's a 1.3 masses of Earth object orbiting around Ross 128. So the certainty here is pretty, pretty high. Um, and because we've been looking at this object for like 10 years, it only increases the idea that this planet exists. Now let's actually give it a little bit of atmosphere, just to make it change a few things. So this is where it gets a little bit more um, science fiction-y. We don't really know if there is atmosphere. We don't really know what kind of atmosphere it might have. We don't really know if it has water on, on the surface. We know nothing else about this object. What we know, of course, is the mass and the orbit of this object and where it's located in relation to its star and what kind of radiation it might receive. Now, for all intents and purposes, this uh, planet would probably receives about 30 to maybe even 50% uh, more radiation or heat than our own sun. In other words, if it has the same atmospheric pressure and content as our own Earth, it would probably be a little bit warmer here. As a matter of fact, the temperature right now is stated to be 107 degrees Celsius and rising. That's not very welcoming. However, we're not entirely sure what the atmosphere is, and we're not entirely sure about the other parameters in the solar system, or in the star system, so we don't really know what exactly the temperature is, but the chance right now for it to be higher than Earth is quite dramatic. The other interesting thing about this object is that uh, this star is actually moving uh, toward our solar system. So in about 50,000 years, it's going to be the closest exoplanet to us. If we're still around by then, maybe we'll even get to visit it, and maybe we'll be able to establish some sort of a cool colony here. Because for all we know, Ross 128 might be actually that first um, world that we'll be able to settle on. It's very Earth-like, it's in the same sort of region of the star system where you'd expect liquid water, and its star is surprisingly quiet compared to other red dwarfs. So you're not going to need to see a lot of flares coming out of this star, simply because it just not, it's not producing enough magnetic fields. But what's even more interesting about um, red dwarfs or M-type stars is that they are very, 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 very long-living. This star is going to be around for trillions of years, thousands of times longer than our own sun. So when the humanity, or I guess if the humanity ever becomes an interstellar species, this actually might be a good opportunity for our own sort of long-term home planet, because this planet is going to be here for a very, 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 very long time, and we'll be able to stay in the same region of space with the same kind of a temperature for like trillions of years. 
And so hopefully we'll actually get to learn more about this planet, especially when James Webb Telescope and also the extremely large telescope become active um, sometime in 2018. And hopefully we'll even get to study its atmosphere if it's present here. Because maybe this is, should be actually the first object that we visit sometime soon. And maybe we should plan a mission to this planet just to discover if this is our new home. Well, anyway, that's really all we know. And this is all I wanted to talk about in this video. And before we finish and uh, land on this beautiful creation of ROS128 in Space Engine, I just wanted to thank the official sponsor of this channel, which is this wonderful educational website called Brilliant.org. Brilliant is specialized in uh, teaching through action. Basically, you do things and you learn by doing. There is actually quite a lot of uh, different topics here, but the one that you might be interested in is right here under astronomy. And this is actually um, a topic known as Worlds Beyond Earth. This is a topic that actually talks about how we find these exoplanets and how we discover them. It talks about Goldilocks zone, a variety of exoplanets, different transit strategies that we use to discover them, and the gravitational wobble that's essentially how we found uh, Ross 128. And this is something that you might want to go through just to learn the math and the science behind how we actually discovered Ross 128 that we're going to go and land on right now. Anyway, go check out brilliant.org. Uh, the link for it is in the description below. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support, guys. Uh, thank you for helping me reach 100,000 and beyond. And let's go and discover what this beautiful world holds. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And we're going to start by landing right here in the middle of this ice region that seems to have a volcano. I think it's a volcano. And we're basically just crashing onto the surface. And there's that volcano in the distance. I think I actually crashed a little bit too far away from it. And we get to actually see what this beautiful volcano looks like in uh, Space Engine simulation. This is actually a pretty incredible object. I've never seen anything that looked like this in Space Engine. And then let's actually go and see where the ice ends and where the liquid water begins. And look at that. There's actually a crevice here, which is pretty awesome. Um, I think actually the way that Space Engine generates these beautiful planets makes them very, very unique because these are the objects that are tightly locked to uh, their star. And so they have this uh, termination line here that has ice that then leads to actual liquid water, which I think starts somewhere right here. Look at that. Whoa, this is incredible. It's like inside this very unusual mountain region. That is very, very beautiful. This is actually one of the more beautiful planets I've seen in Space Engine. So anyway, do check it out by yourself if you have Space Engine or go and download it because it's actually a free simulation tool. And support the person who... And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.